Oyster Research Station Protocol, Oyster Measurements and Mortality. The first step is to fill out the metadata section of your data sheet. Please include your school or affiliation, school grade, number of stewards monitoring, team member names, water body or site name, date and time of collection, and any notes and observations. Next, locate your Oyster Research Station. When you are at your assigned site, you will see teal lines with Billion Oyster Project tags attached. Each tag has a unique number. If you see a cage with a missing tag, please let us know as soon as possible by emailing educate at nyharbor.org. Include your Oyster Research Station tag number on your data sheet in the section shown here. Next, you will need to retrieve water. Make sure your line is securely attached to your bucket. We also recommend you tie the line to the railing. This way you do not lose the bucket in the water. Remember, if you don't know a knot, tie a lot. I also like to wrap the line around my hand a couple of times. When collecting water, if you drop the bucket straight down, it will float. The best strategy I've found is to sway the bucket and drop it in order to scoop the water. Fill your critter tank with the water you collected and turn on the bubbler. You may need to refill your water bucket after this step. Now it's time to pull up your oyster research station. Remember that each ORS location looks different and you may need to bring a personal flotation device, a boat hook, or other materials to retrieve your cage. Please visit your site ahead of time so you're prepared for your visit. After you pull up your oyster research station, place it onto your gray mat or bin. Pour water over your cage to lightly clean the oysters as well as collect any of the critters that were found inside. Pour or place any organisms you find into your small critter tank. Depending on the season, you may find a lot of creatures, just like these amphipods, worms, fish, or even seahorses. The oysters in your cage might be covered in growth and biodiversity. Feel free to wash them off with water and even the scrub brush that you could find in your kit. Put the oyster research station on the side and empty all of the oysters from the cage onto your gray mat or bin. Once your oysters are removed, please select which data collection method you will be conducting. Short on time, representative sampling, or standard method. Measuring an oyster. You should measure the longest length of the oyster from the umbo or the hinge to the bill using a tool called a caliper. The caliper can measure a length between two pairs of teeth, but also with a needle end for hard to reach spots. Be sure to measure one oyster at a time using either the teeth or the needle end. Either method yields the same measurement, so you can use your judgment as to which you use. The needle makes it easier to measure densely packed oyster clusters. You then read the oyster's length on the metric side of the caliper located besides the teeth of the calipers. Repeat this process for each oyster in the cluster. To identify the live and dead oysters, check if it has two shells and that they are sealed. If the oyster has some weight to it, it's also a good sign. Sometimes muck can seal the oysters, so lightly pry at the bill of the oyster. If the seal remains intact, the oyster is alive. A thin, translucent shell at the edge also indicates new growth on a live oyster. Warning, this could be very sharp. And a dead oyster will be open, without an oyster or new growth. When collecting data, we ask you to measure both live and dead oysters, but we only want data points on dead oysters that still have both shells attached. Here are some examples. This dead oyster has two shells still attached. We want this data point. Over here, you can see one shell of a dead oyster. We do not want this data point. Again, here is just one shell of a dead oyster. We do not want this data point. Here is another example of a cluster of oysters. Here are two dead oysters that need to be measured.
whereas here's one dead oyster with one shell that should not be measured. And here's an example of older dead oysters. Short on time, representative sampling method. Spread out all of your oysters in an even layer on your silicone mat and mix them up randomly. Divide the mat into four quadrants. If you do not have a mat, please try your best. The mat size is 19 by 12, so each quadrant should be approximately six inches by nine and a half inches. Randomly select one quadrant for your measurements and be sure to indicate the method you are using on your data sheet. You will be measuring all the live oysters as well as dead oysters with both of their shells in your quadrant. Please be sure to ignore dead oysters with just one shell. Standard data collection method. Spread all your oysters out in an even layer on your silicone mat and measure all of the live oysters as well as all of the dead oysters with both shells, once again ignoring the ones with just one shell. Please note, for both of these protocols, you will only need to measure oysters that are greater than or equal to 15 millimeters, and tally those oysters that are less than 15 millimeters. When the oysters are this small, there usually is a lot of them, and it's important to count them all so that we get an understanding of what the mortality rate is over time. Now, let's do some oyster measurement and caliper reading practice. Here, I'm using the needle end of my calipers to measure an oyster in this densely packed cluster. This oyster is alive and 26 millimeters. Here's a small oyster that's 23 millimeters and alive. Here is the cluster I showed earlier. Two dead oysters with one shell and one dead oyster with two shells. This dead oyster I need to measure. This oyster is 58 millimeters and dead. Now I remove the shell so that I do not count this oyster again when I come back to my oyster research station the next time. Here is another oyster cluster. This small oyster is alive and measures 40 millimeters. This small oyster is dead, measuring 29 millimeters. Once again, I will remove the shell so that I do not measure this dead oyster the next time I come to my station. This small oyster is dead, but I almost didn't notice. You must lightly pry at the bill of the oyster to make sure that the oysters are alive or dead. Here, this dead oyster measures 25 millimeters. Again, I'm removing the shell so I do not count it the next time I come to my oyster research station. While you're out in the field, you should be filling out your data sheet. Make sure to indicate what data collection method you are using. The table on the bottom is for all the measurements of oysters. Please note here if your oysters were live or dead. Later, provide the total amount of live and dead oysters that were less than 15 millimeters and the total of live and dead oysters that were greater than or equal to 15 millimeters. Your cage could have both types of oysters. When you're done, replace all the live and dead oysters back into the cage. The dead oysters provide great habitat for other organisms, as well as surface area for oyster larvae to set to. Secure the lid and gently lower your cage back into the water. And don't forget, we always leave our sites better than we found them. We hope you enjoy your time out in the field and let us know if you have any questions or need support. We always appreciate your feedback, so scan the QR codes if you'd like to give us some. For more STEM resources, please visit billionoysterproject.org. And please consider donating to the Billion Oyster Project.